Good afternoon, brethren. This past year, it has become more and more aware to me that there are indeed two living inside of myself. I'm sure you have all come to realize this as well. There are two ways to view life, this life. As you see, you can see through corruptible eyes or you can see through eternal eyes. As you hear, you can hear through fleshly ears or you can hear through new ears, the ones that Christ gave us when he made us new creatures. As we, we have a conversation a, a way of living our lives. We can mind the things of the flesh, or we can mind the things of the spirit. In our minds, we can think like the enemy, or we can have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. In the world, such a statement seems arrogant. But it is not arrogant for the children of God to claim the mind of Christ. God has gone to great lengths to see that we be able to, to have the mind of Christ, to make right decisions and to not corrupt ourselves and defile, defile ourselves by the world. As you have the mind of Christ, Christ is able to work through you. He's able to cause you to think the way he would think, the way God would think. This afternoon I want to share with you something that began not very long after the last renewal. I was having a conversation with Sister Vanessa about two months after the renewal in October, we were expressing how edified we were by the renewal. But we also expressed in ourselves a disappointment in ourselves that we had not retained all that we knew we could. We were grieved by this, and so we sought about to, to make a way to ready ourselves for the upcoming renewal, we decided to have a special meeting. We met on, the, on one Saturday each month and for the purpose of readying ourselves, we studied this, the topic, the divine glory. We did this in detail, devoting the entire time to familiarizing ourselves with the scriptures, with the topics, with the, the specific sermon topics. It was our aim to get the most out of these three days so that nothing would be lost to us. Up until even today, we hadn't had a name for our, our meeting. But as I was sitting here, uh, the Lord gave us a name. <laughs> we are called the heirs of promise. We see this as a time when we can prepare, not unlike the minister would, pre pre would prepare his sermon before delivering it. As listeners, we should not assume that we have any less a need to be prepared to listen than the minister or speaker has a need to prepare what he will speak. During our lessons, we opened it up so that anyone that had the desire could lead the lesson. We had two purposes for this. One, not everyone, ha everyone has a different view of the topics. So we wanted to get more of a, um, a wider view than, than just one person's um, view. We also wanted to, have, to make this time a time when we can grow. There were a lot of uh, younger believers that we met with that had never had, um, whether they had, didn't have the opportunity 
or they didn't feel comfortable uh, standing in front of people who were more seasoned in the faith, then they would have an opportunity to prepare a lesson and to deliver it. We had Brother Isaac Murphy. Uh, he led two lessons. Um, we had um, Sister Michelle. She led um, a lesson. Um, Brother Jonathan led a lesson. Uh, I led two lessons. And um, there were others as well. Um, Brother Isaac taught on the glory of the Son of God and also how God is glorified through the generations of Israel and through us as his children. Brother Jonathan taught on Christ's glorification of God through his suffering. Sister Michelle taught on our glorification of God through our godly communication. Other topics were the glory of God and Moses' veil, the glory of the kingdom of God, and the glory of the Son of Man. It is our desire that this ministry not fail. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. It is our desire that these meetings continue. It will first take a willing spirit and grace from God in order to keep everything that we've gained because of these meetings. We see the growth as a token from God that he has drawn near to us. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. He has fulfilled this promise to us and given us grace to see it. I asked three of our members to write something that I could read to you on how the meetings have encouraged them and caused them to have, have growth. Sister Michelle writes, I have learned a lot. From the beginning of the lessons to the end of the lessons, I could tell by the last meeting that I was able to understand more than I did at the first meeting. These meetings have helped me during the renewal to listen with greater understanding and eagerness to see if what we discussed and saw during the meetings were also seen by the speakers at the meetings. I am eager to begin them again in preparation for next year's renewal. Sister Eva writes, the meetings have encouraged me to voice what I have seen in God's word. They have been, there have been times of refreshing and have strengthened my love for the brethren. And Sister Logan, and the one thing I have noticed about Sister Logan is that if there is anyone that is need, in need, she will ask prayer for them. Whether they're sick, discouraged, whatever the problem is, she will ask prayer for them and she is always faithful to give God glory for it. During our meetings, we have a time of prayer for the persecuted brethren and anyone else that we see in need. And during, our, uh, during one of our meetings, we asked for prayer for Brother Al as he was ill. And Sister Logan writes, I was encouraged that Brother Al made it here because he had health problems lately. So we see this as an answer to prayer that Brother Al was able to be here. I want to tell you a little bit more about our time of prayer that we set aside. At the beginning of our meetings, we set aside a full hour for a specific prayer for our persecuted brethren. Some we name by name, others by location, and still others by whole countries. We've prayed for ministers who have been injured because of their faith. We pray for children who are persecuted because they want to go to Bible studies. We pray for churches that are closed down because of their governments. We pray for those who have no food because they cannot work because they are believers. It is, as we are, it is our aim that our brethren would receive strength 
because they need the strength to overcome their enemies. God put a, heart, a burden in the hearts of the children of God to have compassion for their brothers and sisters in Christ. Hebrews 13.3 says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Our primary purpose for these meetings is that we can come to know God more. We know that there is much to be gathered at the renewals each year, and we want to prepare our hearts for the receiving of it and make our hands skillful that we may be able to hold on to the things that Christ holds out to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. It says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. The past day and a half, we have, we have been shown God. Whenever you declare the glory of God, you're really showing a picture of Him. One, one thing that we have learned in our meetings is that God and his glory cannot be separated. God is glorif glorified, and he is glory. That is his nature to be glorious. So when you show the glory of God, you're revealing a part of him. I am reminded, and I know uh, someone has already used this illustration of a jewel that the personalities in heaven, the angels and the, um, the elders and all the others that are there, they saw many aspects of who God was. But God used man exclusively to show mercy and compassion and grace. Amen. Um, several years ago, Brother Al stated that personalities in heaven are not idle. We have more than enough reason to labor for the Lord and to not be idle while we are waiting for his appearing. How shall we who have been shown an aspect of God that all the angels and principalities and personalities of heaven had never seen until man was made? How shall we be idle when God gave up his son to be killed? For us... As the scripture says, it is our reasonable service to labor for the Lord. Amen. There are many things to be seen here at the renewal. And it is our desire that we would contain all that, that we are able to. The Lord has, has made us to be able to contain more than we would be able to otherwise. Uh, the several times in the scriptures um, it has been um, shown to us that God is able to take a seemingly impossible situation and to make something out of that that was not possible through man. Amen. The, I'm reminded of the widows um, in Elijah's day that had just a small amount of oil. And they were going to use what they had and that was it. They weren't going to have any more. But then God intervened and he caused them to be able to, re to not only to retain the, that quantity of oil, but gave them the means to store it. So we know that God is able, if he's able to cause that to happen with oil, how much more with what he has to offer to us today. Amen. So we want to be faithful to gather what he has given to us, uh, to not be idle, to just lay it aside and to not pick up what he 
um, has gone to such great lengths to ensure that we have the ability to contain it. So brethren, I wanted to share those things with you to encourage you um, to, to labor for the Lord that, uh, that as these opportunities are presented to us, that we would be diligent to ready ourselves, to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive what God has uh, given to us. Uh, there, are, there are many people who, if they could just get to where the word of God is being proclaimed, they would be there. Um, I am reminded of the brethren in Pakistan who travel thousands of miles just to hear the word preached just to to be there with the brethren so brethren i am thankful that the lord has made it possible each year to, for us to continue in the renewal and um, i pray that that it would continue and also that um, ministers of uh, that are able to rightly divide the word who are able to minister with um, understanding, who see the importance of ministering truth. I pray that this would continue, for it is truly um, pleasing to the Lord. So I thank you for your time. <laughs>